got to get that luster. If you're lacking it, well, you're no higher than a 7. 7 out of 10. No luster, 7. I had no idea it was so specific and definitive. I, uh, I have a lot to think about now, this conversation that I just walked in on. Truly. Truly. Oh, you're all right with Mortal Shell. Like, you gave that a 7. Yeah. Although I don't, I think I was definitely in the minority. I think, uh, yeah. I think most people had some pretty huge hard dicks for that game, and I was just like, whatever. I don't know. I think people uh, really stuck their hardest of hardcore Dark Souls people on it. So. Oh yeah, and I'm not. I'm like as almost as far away from that as a person could get. Um. <clears throat> And listen, you know the game is a specific kind of thing when the highest score on Metacritic came from Dark Station, which I can only assume is a Dark Souls PlayStation blog. Oh, that's dark. Yeah. Not that I... I mean, I could have found a better word for that, but that's dark. Welcome to Dark Station. Well, it's the darkest souls. God, these souls are so dark, I can't even see them. Where the fuck are my souls? Oh, that's too much sugar. I made a mistake. That's fine. Make uh, an old fashioned or something? It's a uh, rum and coke in a can <laughs> from Bacardi, and I just, I did. <laughs> There's no need for that. <laughs> I have some nice, easy drinking Cuddy Sark as an accompaniment. Mm, well, that's a real mood. I think my taste buds are permanently damaged because I can drink Cuddy Sark, much like other people will drink wine. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Which is, uh, for those unfamiliar with Cuddy Sark, it's just, it's just shitty blended scotch. Mmm. Yeah. AKA my, one of my four favorite beverages. You got scotch, scotchy scotch, um, scotch blends, and scotch on ice? Oh, no. <laughs> a wild guess. Some people like it that way. I don't Jesus understand. Jesus Christ. The list goes like this. There's scotch, there's cold lager in a hot day, uh, coffee very early in the morning. Four slot is still open. We're, uh, desert is deciding. Those are the three. They're not alcoholic, but, uh, you know. I think it's kind of fitting that your top four beverages are actually three. All right. Oh, God. Uh, 7% mistake. Jesus. We're going to get through this, James. We are. We are going to get through this. <sighs> hey, everybody. It's Press X the Podcast for the week of August the 24th, 2020. This is episode 318. Thanks for coming along for this ride. We do this podcast every couple of weeks or so ish on a very very strict tight schedule and uh, my name is paul i'm your host and alongside me i have my two buddies from the cog connected universe that's james and rat hello everybody hello how are you guys doing uh, i'm moving in less than a week it's a whole thing nice wow it's always yeah. a process. You're, uh, you've managed to keep the the old recording setup intact then, for the time being. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The electronics go last. Uh, we ran out of boxes twice, anyways. It was a whole thing. Uh, but yeah, the movers will come over on Sunday. I think. Oh. Uh, we'll load all our shit into one of their trucks. Well, they will. <laughs> but do it. Oh God, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Been there. So you're going to watch judgmentally or watch supportively? Supportively, so they don't do anything horrible. So, it, so I, I supportively, so I never need to watch judgmentally. That's uh, yeah, that's the right. breakdown. All right. In my experience, it's, it's supportively until it becomes judgmentally, which is usually within the first couple hours. Yeah, just don't let them move your fucking big screen TV. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to do. But, do that I mean, that's do... a fucking job. What else are they getting paid for? The furniture and the boxes. I, I I, I, that's fair, but I don't, need a, I don't need them to move the cushions. Move that fucking TV. 
Yeah. See, uh, I don't need strangers <laughs> wanging and banging my, my fucking discount off-brand 4K television around. I don't know how sturdy or stable the thing is, my guess. Why are Not they very. wanging it? It's the thing that precedes banging, man. It's just, <laughs> it's there's an order to these things. First you wang, then you bang when you're Shit. moving furniture and also when sex happens. It's it's very universally applicable technology terminology. Fair. If, uh, yeah. Clearly I so, need to brush up on my wanging. <laughs> where does clanging fit into all this? Oh. Hopefully nowhere. Um I mean if they if they have to wang and bang, then I guess it has to happen to like bigger, bulkier pieces of furniture. But Jesus Christ, there'll be no clangs of any sort whatsoever, no matter what object is being hauled from place to place. All right. That is a, that is a forbidden action. I actually have some experience with clanging, so that's too bad. Yeah, well, it'll go to no use on this yeah. move. Fuck me. Don't need your clanging. Mm-mm. And clang on your own time. Uh, anyways, this podcast is usually about video games, not moving and or not. Um, oftentimes we talk about video games. Oftentimes we do. And James, I desperately want to know more <laughs> about Kandagawa Jet Girls. Fuck yeah. Okay, well, here's the deal. Like so many that have come before, Kandagawa Jet Girls is the uh, brainchild of uh, XC slash Marvelous and uh, a little company called Honey Parade and Shade Inc. These guys do uh, Senron Kagura and all the Senron Kagura spinoffs, including that truly disturbing Reflection one that came out for the Switch. Uh, this one is about uh, high school girls who race around on jet skis. Um, here's, a, here's, here's one of the only two things you need to know about these games. Um, a, they spend all of their resources on the character models, so they look amazing you know they, they move well you know they're well animated the the, the 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 lighting and the effects look amazing and everything else looks like yeah crap mm -hmm. ps3 it's fine it doesn't matter and then uh the second thing you need to know is that they're never as good at the thing they're supposed to be about as you hope they will be mm. like senran kagura is ostensibly about ninja fighting and it's acceptable six out of ten at best generally speaking whenever you pick up one of those games uh same with like peach beach splash which is about water gun fights and the mechanics are sloppy and the graphics are whatever and the effects don't look that great and uh, the shots have any impact kind of go jet girls no different the racing is perfectly serviceable if not entirely too fucking easy and uh uh some of the mechanical systems and the power-ups don't make any sense or don't really need to be there. The games are kind of just vehicles for the character models and, like, they're vapid stories if you're into that, but, like, the only time I've gotten any sort of, like, genuine enjoyment out of these games is, like, collecting and unlocking outfit pieces so I can play a sort of, like, dress-up simulator where it's just, like, what kind of wacky shit can I do to these girls? Put them in, like, you know bright fucking hyper colored neon and like four different colored hair and like throw every accessory on and make sure that they're all the biggest ones as you can get or you know just put every character in a bikini I guess if that's your thing <clears throat> it sounds a lot like uh, Dead or Alive used to be yeah yeah good at the things that it's not necessarily <laughs> supposed to be good at um so well, I mean, they they know who their audience is. They know what they're doing. True. So yeah, you know, true. if if the jet skiing is not up to par, most of the target audience is going to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Interesting. Interesting note as far as that goes. Traditionally, with these games, they'll come out for multiple different systems. In the PS4 version, PS4 PS4 version, rather, you know, what the fuck I was saying before is the one, generally, that's slightly more censored. Mm. Not for any particular reason. Other platforms Ooh. won't have the same issue, but the PS4 version, historically, is a little bit more strict when it comes to what sort of content it allows. Now, I've only played the PS4 version. I don't know what the differences are. Frankly, I don't care if you really need things as scantily clad and lusty and busty as humanly possible 
there are resources available to help you out. You know, there's programs and systems in place all over the internet specifically designed to cater to your particular needs. Mm. They will not go unmet. Um, I can't imagine the gameplay is like better on the PS on the PC version. Um, probably just as wonky and just as whatever. But again, the the the, the dress up and the, like the slowly unlocking things. That that was that was cool. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's fine. So there's just slightly more wanging and banging on the PC. Well, I mean, generally there's officially five percent more, and also as soon as one of these games comes out on PC, uh, an army of industrious, dedicated nerds <laughs> will work on some unofficial patches that, you know. In case there's something about the outfits you want to fix, or maybe there's not enough options, you know, maybe the 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 clothing transparency could be adjusted if you're the sort of person into that sort of thing, right? There's all sorts of things you can do. Generally, it's just the one, but it, people are very industrious, very busy, they're very dedicated, they're very good at what they do. So, if you are part of the target audience for these, uh games you probably won't get the ps4 version and that's fine hey was reflections that one that we talked about a, a, a while ago like a couple of years ago where you spend a lot of your time just kind of hitting the girls like mas- yeah there's like massage elements or something it's it's not a lot it's all of it it's oh. all of your time it's right. like a da- it was like a dating sim with no sim and no dating it's just a series of mini games where you like <clears throat> massage heaviest conceivable air quotes this one girl and um I don't recall there being any controller options for like one-handed to play which seems to me <laughs> like a critical JFC uh design flaw for their target audience also <laughs> bafflingly it's only for the Nintendo Switch it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive release and you look through that mm. Switch eShop, and they have a surprising amount of games just like that. I don't know. Yeah. There, there's little quality control, apparently, on that Switch eShop. Because, yeah, a lot of these Holy games, shit. And, it and is... They're like $1.49, $1.99, $2.99. Mm. You know? I That's... think there's one that just came out on the Switch that has actual um, <clears throat> boobs. Wow. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it might be the horniest system out there. Yeah. There's a, there's a there's a one I can't remember the name of. It's like a top down shooter type thing, but you're like fighting giant anime women. They take clothing damage. I don't know, it's a whole thing. Anyways, I'm pretty sure it's on Switch. Pretty sure it is as the designers intended, not pampered in any significant way. Um wild world out there. Anyways. Well, you know what those Joy Cons can double as? Go on. Yeah, the, the 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 I know what you're thinking. The drift that basically every Joy-Con encounters in his lifetime. I feel like that ensures that that won't really happen to the satisfaction of the uh, demographic you have in mind. But you know, go yeah. off, right? Yeah. No, no, that's fair. If you'd like to hear more about that Reflections game, I did scroll back in time, and you can listen to the episode entitled "Inner Thigh Bongo Lessons," oh. in which. <laughs> We discuss reflections in depth. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> that should tell you all you need to know. Yeah. And on on the the other side of the horniness coin, Brett, why don't you tell me about PGA Tour or Two K Twenty One? Horniness, golf, goes hand in hand. Uh, eighteen <laughs> holes in a day, and I still have time for golf. PGA oh Tour to PGA Tour <laughs> PGA Tour 2K21. What an absolute joke this this fucking game turned out to be. And I, I I'm looking at the scores on Metacritic, and I apparently like my time with the game was a complete anomaly because other people are absolutely loving it. I'm seeing 90s, I'm seeing 87s, 85s. Uh, people love this game. I, on the other hand, had. I don't know, maybe 
four or five good days with the game, and ever since then, it's been broken. Um, I was like, mentioning to Paul before we, we got started that the golf itself is very, very good. Uh, actually, you know, assessing shots, lining things up, dropping the ball where you want it to go, it's all super, super satisfying, and, and I was having a lot of fun with it. But around the 15, 20 hour mark, I was hit with this like backswing bug that essentially like broke the game. It broke my swing. Every time I would try to pull the stick back to, to initiate my backswing, uh, the swing itself wouldn't register. Um, anybody listening, if they want to see this, they can see it in the review video that was posted to our Cog Connected channel today that uh, James put together. Very, very uh, I, job well done. I tried to isolate it as much as possible. Yeah, but you, uh, you saw it, right? Like it's fucked. Yeah. And, yeah, it's and, not a good time. <laughs> uh, so they, the solution was for me to delete my save file. And they, of course... Oh, jeez. Right? Like, they, I, I actually got an email today saying that they may have isolated the issue. So we'll see. But, I mean, the damage was already done. Everything was gone. 15, Boy. 20 hours. And so, like, I'm just at the point now where I don't even want to start the game up again. Well, I, I, I will play around here and there, but I don't want to start my career. I don't want to actually go through the game. I don't want to put that time back into it. I, I just feel gutted. So, yeah, like it was very, very difficult for me to rate this game above uh, 55. And, and don't get me wrong, like it's not just that bug. You know, there are problems with the commentary, audio bugs. Um, the career mode itself is extremely bare bones. You essentially, you, you start it up. You can start basically in the minors if you want to. You can choose just to go straight to the PGA Tour. Um, either way, though, it's basically, you know, play a round of golf, move on to the next round of golf. There's nothing really in between. You know, of course, you can adjust your clubs and, and make uh, uh, changes, fixes like that. But, um, yeah, there's just like nothing that you would expect out of a, a 2020 sports game, you know. Um, we'll talk about it in a bit, but uh, the new NHL is coming out, and, and, and their be a pro mode is all about, story beats and making decisions that affect your your play and that's really what i was hoping to see out of pga tour 2k21 there's there's nothing of the sort so this game was made by the team that previously has worked on the golf club correct hb studios so they had was it three golf club games before pga tour 2k21 mm, i feel like it was two. two two so so they had the two games beforehand uh 2K games have stepped in and like taken over the franchise. And that's another reason why I was so excited about this game. Why I had it as my number two most anticipated game of the year when we did that show a few, a few uh, months back. Yeah. Um, I was so stoked for the fact that we were finally going to get a mainline golf game, mainstream golf game uh, that again, wasn't the golf club um, that's, would have been able to rival Tiger Woods or for that matter, the Rory McIlroy game that came out in 2015. Um, but it's just, I, I just don't see how it rivals. Like I, I made the comparison in my review that this game very much feels like the golf games of the early 2010s. And I stand by that. I, I don't see how it's any better than Tiger Woods, 2010, 2011 uh, visually. Gameplay might be a little bit tighter, but as far as everything else, as far as the complete package, I don't know, man. This game feels like it's a decade old. I mean, at least. Yeah. Golf yeah, games absolutely. peaked with, you know, like Tiger Woods 09 on the PS3. Totally. I was saying in the chat that uh, 07 has been my favorite golf game to yeah. date. I still don't think anybody's touched that. And that's goddamn 13 years ago. Um yeah, I but I, I ended my review with I believe that PGA Tour is now sitting at the, the base of a mountain of potential, and I really do believe that. I think that the sky is the limit from here, and, and uh, the games will be nothing but better moving forward. But this one, man, for me personally, tough to recommend. Tough to recommend. I mean, if you're going to call a game PGA Tour, you expect there to be a really robust tour mode where you're right. you're a golfer and you know you got the ups and downs of the season and you know you For gotta sure. you gotta that, prep your your guy to head to augusta or whatever it is that's that's coming down the pipe absolutely it sounds like that that stuff's just completely missing uh you said you know like uh the ups and downs of a season that brings me back to the commentary one of my big issues with the game is that the commentary 
it, it just completely lacks in like building up the the tension of a situation you know uh whereas you know w when you listen to real golf commentary you know they it's almost as if they're like getting in the golfer's ear you know they bring their their voices down to a whisper before the shot and they'll they'll do a great job in building up tension but with pga tour 2k21 uh the commentary is just so vague and so like uh just like meaningless to say like I, I the example that i used in my review was you'll be lining up for a shot and and the commentator will just go this player is having a great day like why is that even there i don't need to hear that you know uh yeah so just stuff like that they, they really really struggle on man there's so many presentation woes. uh real quick the last thing i would say about the game though is that it has an amazing course creator if you've ever wanted to build a golf course this thing is actually fucking amazing all right. It sounds like that commentary might have been pulled directly out of the golf club because I think I it was. Well, the first time I played it was at the end of a 24-hour stretch on Extra Life and you know, everything was pretty funny at that point, but the commentary was so ridiculous. It made just little to no sense at any point. Yeah. And god, that's inexcusable to come from a a, a 2K sports background. It's forgivable when it's the little guys making this golf game where the simulation is actually pretty good, but it's mm -hmm. just kind of rough around the edges, but you get that big cash infusion. You expect a little more out of them. Truly. It's, Unfortunately. It's, it's pretty frustrating when I sink a massive birdie to like tie for first place. And the commentary goes, and this player just made par. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that was a nice putt. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's like a 79 footer <laughs> six yeah, breaks exactly. on the way and you exactly. drain it like, like oh, it literally a goes in, a, in an s getting to the fucking cup yeah. and uh, you would think that you're fucking sunday shopping at a walmart or something like there's just no emotion in this game pisses mm. me off well better luck next year 2k uh 2k sports yeah i'm looking forward to it good luck why don't we keep rolling on the sports train? Because uh, I'm real curious about NHL 21. <laughs> but I thought the last game was woefully underbaked. Yeah, and I know we, you and you liked it quite a bit, Red. But we, yeah, we, we we disagreed for sure because, uh, and we've had the discussion many times before. I just thought that like the the collective mindset of EA Sports came together. And they started to get the game on the right track. I felt like they actually believed in the mantra of let's get this game to feel real. Mm -hmm. And I, I was saying in my 21 preview that, of course, they had a long, long ways to go. But at least I just felt like they were making the right steps. With 21, man, I, I am very nervous about this game. I think it's going to absolutely bomb uh, critically, oh, commercially. Um, I hate to say it because, you know... <laughs> I read a couple of the other previews that have been put out today and the general vibes are pretty positive. People like what they see, but I feel like the general vibes of last year and the year before that and the year before that were pretty positive too. Um, 21 is looking like it's going to continue the trend of the NHL series taking every other year off. Uh, what I've noticed for the past 10 years is like, 2010 will seem to have a, a, a fair improvement. 2011 will be, you know, the year off. 2012 will then again bring in something new that actually changes the game. And 13 will be off and, and so on and so forth. Um, and this game really feels like it's going to be the year off. Uh, there are two major selling points that they're pushing this year. One of them is the improved Via Pro mode that I was mentioning, um, where they said that they have hundreds of different story beats that play out. So, you know, you'll see... Uh, your player getting drafted and then you'll go up and you'll actually put on your jersey and then you'll make a decision or, or then you'll go do an interview afterwards and you'll make a couple choices as far as what you say uh, that will kind of set you off on your career path. And then, uh, you know, your first game will come up and the coach will come into the dressing room and he'll be talking to you one on one and you'll have a couple options. And uh, afterwards, after the game, the team, uh, uh, maybe your line mate will want to go out to a bar or something like that and you'll have the option to either. Uh, go back to your hotel or go out with the team and uh, you know team chemistry will be altered because uh, 
this way and um, uh, performance uh, performance changes will will happen depending on what you choose uh, all sorts of things like that that like they really seem to be moving via pro mode towards <laughs> it, it seems like the NHL series is getting the treatment that like FIFA and and Madden have gotten for years you know uh, it seems like NHL is finally catching up in that regard um, but as far as gameplay goes, so the other the other thing that they're trying to push this year is like the all-new Deke system. Um, I guess it's not a new Deke system. It's just a new bunch of Deeks that have been added to the uh, the right stick. So things like uh, the Michigan Deke, where you can start off from a standstill position behind the net, bring the puck up into the air, and just kind of like wrap it around the net and drop it top corner. Um, stuff like that. Uh, new just new ways to manipulate the puck is is what's being pushed here and um don't get me wrong like i love it i appreciate it if more control over the puck is always a good thing but i mean i just don't see how this game is going to look any more like real hockey does you know there's nothing being done as far as like the presentation goes in that regard um both of those things just sound like if you were coming up with a feature list for this game of new features, this is what's better in NHL 21. Those things are 10 or 12 items down the list. Right? I was gonna, those like, aren't your those, headliners. Do those things not just sound like a couple of bullet points for the back of the box? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, what happened for the other rest of the year? Absolutely. But this this, this preview, like, they led with the, with the new Deeks. And uh, that's why, you know, they've got Ovechkin on the cover this year because they're... They're calling it the year of the great eight, and uh, they're they're comparing the new sort of control you have over the puck to to how Ovechkin plays the game and um, the sort of creativity he brings to the game. They're trying to push, but man, it, it just sounds like the same song and dance from last year. They were they were pushing all new like creativity last year. You know, I I literally felt like I was getting the same presentation. Um, so yeah, I'm just concerned about this game and then last thing is just there's a few changes coming to like hut mode world of chill eashl um but they're all little minor changes that don't really translate to the average player or like the casual player like the guy that's just picking up a game of chill and and, and he wants to play a game or two with his friends he doesn't care about world of chill getting ranked leaderboards or like eashl getting uh like championship tournaments after like, you know, six weeks of a season being played out, just stuff like that, that they're, that they're pushing is being like, Oh, revolutionary. All this, like just game changing stuff. It's just like, it's just so minuscule to the big, the bigger picture. I think it's so yeah. not what NHL fans have been wanting out of this game. I don't, I don't care about a new hockey ultimate team. That's a uh, hockey ultimate team mode. That's based around getting through games quickly. I don't want to get through a game quickly. I want to play a game that looks and feels like hockey. I want to be in a game and enjoy it. Why would I want to burn through these games as quick as I can, you know? Uh, yeah, it just seems backwards to me. I, I really Chill feel 21. Like, yeah. Sorry, go on. I really feel like there are two schools of thoughts when it comes to sports games generally. And if you're an average consumer who picks up a sports game once every few years, you can pretty much buy any of them and know that it's a, a relatively okay simulation of whatever sport it is. Yes. And that's that's fine for those people, but for the people who are buying it year after year after year, I think that reviews have to take that into account, that this is not a substantially better game than it was last year. And sure. there are exceptions to that rule, generally where there are competitors in the space. So Absolutely. I would say, like, FIFA and Pro Evo Soccer is the exception to the rule where those games get substantially better every year where there's different ball physics or there's new, um, you know, tactical ways that you can play the game. And those things happen literally every year. But games like Madden or NHL, they just don't change. Like, yeah. if you pick up NHL 21 and play it and then went back and played NHL 11, oh. it's, it's essentially the same game. For sure. You wouldn't... Yeah be able to tell a substantial difference i, I bet I, and... I hate the fact that they they have never figured out the broadcast camera 
there is a good broadcast camera that they implement, but nobody ever uses it because like it changes the way the controls work and it just doesn't really make sense. But I mean, have you ever seen a hockey game broadcast from the fucking up and down camera that they use to play chill? Like I, I would just love to see the game look like a hockey broadcast. That's why I love NBA 2K so much. It blows me away that, yeah, I mean, you start up a game and you get the, the pregame commentary with Shaq and, and Kenny Smith and, and it goes into the game, and you've got uh, you've got reporters on the floor talking to the team, and like, man, it's just so cinematic. And I understand like, FIFA is a tough comparison because soccer is something that's played literally everywhere, right? So yeah. that game is going to do very well worldwide. Um, so I understand why like NHL doesn't get the same treatment as as uh, FIFA, but still, man, it doesn't make it any easier to swallow doesn't make it any easier to stomach every year yeah i feel like ea in particular has to go go back to the well take a look at their stable of teams and studios and what kind of engines they have available and they got to build some kind of unified structure so yeah when you know they build a new physics engine for fifa why can that why doesn't that ball physics engine correspond to puck physics in nhl or or you know punt return physics in madden or whatever it is like those things should be able to cross over yeah anyway 100 100 anyways sports games fuck them fuck them indeed (laughs) uh i've been playing rogue legacy too now what's this all about well Rogue Legacy came out, I think it was in 2013, and it is quite possibly the game that I have played most this generation, most number of hours. Um, It is a run-based 2D platformer in which every time you die, the concept is you pick a successor to your your Mm. character. And the successor is... Uh, one of several classes, and they have certain quirks about them. So sometimes you'll pick a successor, and uh, your controls are inverted, or your uh, everything's upside down, or it's black and white, or you can't see or, far. Yeah, you're nearsighted. I was gonna say <laughs> things like that. So that that was Rogue Legacy one, and there was quite a, a meta game aspect of using gold to build up your castle and advance. And the thing I really liked about Rogue Legacy was that despite being a challenging game on the surface, it was really relaxing to play. So it didn't feel like there were huge stakes if you totally botched a run or you had the wrong character because they were nearsighted or whatever, and you just didn't get that far, not a big deal. And the uh, the castle that you, uh, you spawned into was randomly generated every time. So it was always a new experience. Um, much like you might see in Dead Cells or something, but a little bit more friendly and approachable. So when I heard there was going to be a Rogue Legacy 2, I was extremely excited about this. Uh, and it's it's just come out in early access, so there's not a ton there. Uh, but from what I have seen so far, it seems to be better in just about every key way. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So... Uh, the graphics are great. The pixel art is tons better than it used to be. I was going to say, I'm uh, looking at screenshots right now, and it's fucking adorable. It, it, it's, it really is. Yeah. Um, one of the things it, it seems like they're doing f- compared to the last game is moving some of the movement options, like you could equip runes in the original game to get a double jump or to get a dash move. And in the the early access version here, there's like a a challenge mission that I went through to get or permanently unlock a dash. Oh, sick. So it seems like they're, they're doing some, some wacky stuff with the mechanics to kind of change it up, but it doesn't feel like they've gone too far away from that precise pixel, perfect, uh, jumping and dashing and slicing and dicing that made the first game so much fun. So, um, yeah, the first the first game had like some real bullet hell style boss fights mm-hmm. that 
I beat mostly through luck and yes. a tiny bit of skill, but generally a lot of luck. Have you seen a lot any boss fights so far? Like, what's the... Uh, there is uh, a large door that I've run across several times. I'm not sure how to open it just yet. Ooh. So mm. uh, there's there's definitely a boss in this in the version that's out right now, but I haven't seen it yet. So Sweet. mystery. Yeah. And so sorry, the version that's out right now. So is this like an early access thing? Or it is early access. Okay. Okay. Um, which I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about. I had the the same kind of feelings about Dead Cells when that game came into early access because I played it when it came out, really, really liked it, and then kind of fell off of it. So when it came out uh, finally as a 1.0 version, I felt like I kind of knew the game already. So it wasn't quite as surprising and, and as exciting as maybe it could have been or should have been. So I'm, I'm concerned that that might happen to this game as well, but... Uh, based on the the time I've been having with it so far, it's a great time. Even if you've got you know twenty thirty minutes to kind of sit down and go through a couple of runs of uh, the castle that they have thus far, um, yeah, it's a pretty good time. Now, it's pretty good. One question: so so you said that you've got your successors, and the gameplay will change a little bit depending on you know which successor you take. Mm -hmm. Now, do you feel as if you are becoming better equipped for these runs with these successors, or is it just like you know you've got your uh, you've, you've got your character and uh, like I'm thinking of a game like kind of Enter the Gungeon, you know, where you go you do a run and then you can pick a different character and he may have some different skills, but the game isn't any easier because of that. What what, what are they kind of doing with that? So there is a leveling mechanic where over the course of your uh, lifetimes you do you do level up um, and get stronger mm. the castle kind of levels with you but yeah. as you're you're going along the way you're picking up scrolls and runes and upgrading your castle in various ways that do make you uh, better equipped to to deal with things so you get more health or you get a better sword or you've got different armor things like that um, cool. to push you down that path um, but Unlike something like Gungeon that's really punishing and is designed in a way that wants to make you feel like you're a loser, <laughs> I never feel that way in Rogue Legacy. Because if, if I die, it's because I misjudged the way this skeleton was throwing this bone and it nailed me and I died. Mm. There is a skill element to it, but it approachably lets you build up that skill over time. And there's not really a consequence or a penalty for doing badly. I'm I'm watching a stream on like the Steam page, and it's giving me all sorts of good nostalgic memories about the first game, making me feel like at some point in time in the near future, I'm gonna want to check out the second one, even if it is in like a rough early access form. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm it, it's not rough at all. It's it's very polished in terms of how it plays. There's just mm. not a lot of content there. So like in gotcha. the first game, there's there's four different kind of biomes that you end up in over the course of your run. If you're, if you're doing really well, you get to all four of them. Uh, there seems like there's just one biome right now and the one boss and a lot of the uh, upgrades and unlocks in the castle are, are not available yet. So mm. it's kind of limited in one way. I feel like once this gets to a, a 1.0 kind of state, I'm probably just going to restart. And, and you know start a new a new legacy if you will yeah. that's a great plan but yeah it seems like there's a few different classes and the classes actually feel substantially different where they they often didn't in the old game there are are similar classes but for example the uh the knight versus the barbarian in the original game basically the barbarian just had more health than the knight and in this game, the Barbarian is way slower, can only attack when it's standing still. But if you jump and attack, it does this sweet spinning axe uh, attack that's super awesome. So that it seems like there's way more incentive to pick different classes based on what you want to get done in this run. Nice. Yeah. Sounds fun. And James, you've been, you've been 
Am I reading this right? Have you been playing Diablo three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. Uh, I had a, I had a bit of a relapse as is described <laughs> yeah. in certain parlances. And, uh, I, I, I hopped back on Diablo. I found a character that was just about at max level or the traditional level system as is understood and did about, I don't know, 15, 20 hours of finagling with it just to see if I can get it beefed up. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> that game is crazy polished at this point. Like the systems that they figured out and put in place since his original release way back in 2012 have been like more or less perfected. Um, it like a lot of blizzard games suffers from this really intense power creep where yeah. like back in the day you're like, Oh man, I did like a hundred thousand damage. And this one guy was a crazy combo. Never see him see that number again. I like this time I finished a six piece set and got all the pieces and equipped it and like lined up my skills according to its stated bonuses. And I did, I did like 30 billion damage in a combo. Yeah. Like a critical hit did like 30 billion damage for one guy. And I was just like, Oh Jesus Christ. That's the dragon ball effect, man. <laughs> yeah. It's all yeah. 9,000. It's 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 awesome when you like get your stuff set up properly so you're just like running around the map at top speed and effects are blowing up in every direction and just like enemies are exploding and like rare like legendary items are like dropping and shooting their crazy beams up into the ceiling and it's just like a, a fucking cacophonous parade of effects and shit like that that's amazing you get into that rhythm and you're just like oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah boom 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 you just go and you go and you go but like I find you hit a sort of ceiling pretty quick when you know enough about the game. You're just like, oh, no, I'm godly powerful and any improvements now will be incremental or like you'll try a different build and you're like, oh, this is so much worse. Why did I switch? This was dumb. I, I just find I've been playing the game for so goddamn long and for so many hours that like I like go from like zero to bored with my godlike power in maybe a week. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that game, and I, to an extent I feel the same way about Rogue Legacy, is great for doing while you're doing something else. So if you're listening yeah. to an audiobook or a podcast, those those games are amazing to occupy your eyeballs and your fingers. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, I've got it on the Switch, so you got like the dodge roll mm -hmm. mechanics built right into one of the buttons. And if you have a pro controller, it's actually quite quite easy to definitely maneuver your way through most terrible situations nice yeah. yeah um i really should never play that game again <laughs> i should just i should just delete it from my fucking switch and never reinstall <laughs> it but i know it's not going to happen and I, I i i've probably said it loud a couple of times i'm not playing diablo 4 shut up past james yes you are <laughs> all right <Yeah>. don't <laughs> fucking lie to me now what about the mobile one though Will you play that Nah. No, I don't play. I don't play games on my phone. I mean, I'm sure it'll be perfectly acceptable, but I don't. If I can help it, I don't ever do that. Yeah, fair. That that's for Twitter, and self-loathing, not for video games. <laughs> this got real, really real all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, James. I'm just saying, different devices have different functions, and that Stare. the phones functions are very specific. <clears throat> Speaking of devices with different functions, uh, moving into the news, there's a Taiwanese newspaper that claims <laughs> a new Switch is coming next year, and uh, it seems like maybe, probably, almost certainly, this might be bullshit. Uh, okay, so I did the news report on this earlier today, and uh, I gotta find the quote, because it's fucking ridiculous. So the quote I saw. It's like how from many the of these reports found, do we get every year? Pretty, they're pretty regular. This one says Nintendo might launch a new version of its Switch console early next year, citing unidentified people in the supply chain. I mean, I have heard a few times, relatively recently, that Nvidia has been working pretty closely with Nintendo, and Nvidia made the Switch chip. So, 
you know, but does that mean that it's coming out next year? Definitely not. Unidentified person in the supply chain. I mean, fuck, I'm at the end of the supply chain. That could have been me. Yeah. Was it you, Rhett? (laughs) It wasn't me, but it very well could have been. I, I was pretty sure it was complete, like a complete fucking smoke show. I found on Reset Era, which is like basically for people who don't know, that's that's where stories break. <laughs> like that's where shit pops up that's like Yeah. Oh, nobody else knows about this yet? Well they do. <clears throat> it's also kind of a cancer in a lot of ways. God, it just burns my eyes every time I have to look at it. Oh, I mean, yes, it was designed in 2009. It has never changed. It's fine. Well, I don't, I don't mean the design. I mean, the topics are, are equally, this is cool breaking news and just pain and suffering, you know? Right. That's fair. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a series of forums powered by fans. Some things are not meant for the eyes of the well-adjusted, and that's okay. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, they did have a little bit of of information, apparently, but this is like, but like the source is this this fucking theedgemarket.com, which itself sources to mm. uh nothing from what I can tell. So <laughs> that's cool. The dark web. That's, yeah, like fuck off with this hot nonsense. <laughs> Um. Yeah, and they're like, uh, new Switch will have upgraded interactivity, improved display quality, and will enter production later this year. Uh, and everything else, everything else on on the page that like has the direct information is just like shit we've known about forever or sales numbers, which do not fucking matter. When it comes to next, the next generation of hardware, it's uh, it's real weird. It's real weird, guys. That seems like a tenuous report at best. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I guess the the rumors of a Switch Pro or a Switch 4K have been swirling forever. Yeah, years, oh, I mean, like two years at least. Like odds see, are, we're the, gonna see it someday. Here's the yeah. thing. A lot of other articles will cite that rumors about a new Switch console have been circulating ever since 2018. The important thing about that tidbit is that they, the rumors predate the arrival of the Switch Lite. So basically, you heard rumors about a new model of Switch in 2018, and then one came out in 2019, and people are still referring back to the 2018 rumors when discussing the possibility of a new model of Switch. Oh Which man, is... I remember. I remember when that Switch Lite was unveiled on Reddit. Everybody was like, "No, the Pro is still coming. The Pro is still coming. This wasn't the actual upgrade. This this wasn't it." <sighs> Come on. Just accept that Nintendo does not give a single fuck about power and move on with your lives. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. It's never mattered to them. It never will. I mean, would I like to see Mario Odyssey in 4K? Yeah. I would. Mm-hmm. Am Breath I? Of the wild. Breath of the Wild would be sexy. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. No, no chance, yeah. Stretch Pants. It ain't fucking happening. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And I would love to see the Outer Worlds in 4K as well. On a Switch? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Outer Worlds, Crisis. Uh, what was the other one I hated? I Most mean, of them. It was, yeah, right? It's worlds, fine. Yeah, yeah, Just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insert name of switchboard here. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, you like so, Alien Isolation. That that game was alright. Alien Isolation actually looks better on the Switch. It's crazy. James, go for it. What what you you were gonna? You I were was gonna doing. say we had the big DC weekend over the weekend where they Ooh, were just yeah. like, here's all the DC news, including things like the Snyder Cut of Justice League, which feels like a monkey's paw. Curling one finger inwards. Every time I see more about the Snyder Cut, I'm like, oh, somebody made a child's wish and they really shouldn't have. <sighs> eh, I'll watch it. Yeah. I want to see what what is actually happening in that man's mind. 
But here's the thing. He didn't like get any any big peeps. Like he, he wasn't like wrangling big actors to do reshoots or anything. He was just like hired a fucking team of nerds chained to their fucking desks and their keyboards but like all right do some cg magic and make me some more content <laughs> and it's like that like oh oh that oh the other important thing is that the snyder cut is supposed to be the original vision of the justice league without joss whedon's intervention and i need everybody to understand <laughs> and he, that his shit was the most tolerable part of that movie because it was fun and lighthearted and there were jokes and they told them and they were good. But but Zack Snyder has no room in his heart for wit or, or repartees or back and forth. He doesn't do that. It's poison to him, to his fucking skin. This is going to be so awful. No, I'll tell you what my single singular hope is for the Zack Snyder mm. cut and it's that they use the same technology that they used to get rid of Henry Cavill's mustache <laughs> to bring that rock and stash back for the whole film Fuck I want to see Superman, Superman with, mustache. with this just push broom duster on the end Ooh, of his nose flavor saver yes <laughs> yeah no I yes. want that that's a, an extra star onto the 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 score for the movie Easily. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They do that shit. Like, let's see the mustache cut. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got to be possible. Let's get that petition started. Fuck this <clears throat> Snyder cut nonsense. Bring back the stash, baby. Just ex- two hours of extreme <laughs> lip sweater close ups. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's like, you have no idea what's going on in the rest of the shot, <laughs> but you can count all the hairs on his upper lip. <laughs> Uh, no audio even. It's just mute. Just two hours well, of it's not, silent. It's not mustache. muted. It's just like quiet. It's like when those scenes in like a war movie when you like get that like hearing loss thing and you can get like a little bit of sound. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like the, the must. Yeah, it's like the mustache is a sound dampener, so you get some of it, but like you get hear like the flash yelling in the in the in the the numb distance. Yeah. Or like Wonder Woman. <laughs> saying something cool but you can't make it out because the mustache is like drowning out all sure, sound it's, it's kind of like the charlie brown teacher mop 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 yeah yeah arguably that makes justice league better oh, way fucking fuck better man so. justice league sucked ass justice I, league yeah was perfectly adequate <laughs> i'll be honest i haven't seen it but i heard it sucked ass it's it's a solid six and a half out of ten Okay. Superhero movie. Really? You'd go that high? Yeah, <laughs> sure. For Justice League, sure. It's fine. All right. Just for um, like anyways. comparison's sake, sorry, just one yeah. for comparison's sake, what would you have given Suicide Squad? Uh Oof. four. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. it's the a three to four. Uh, yeah. I would have even gone lower. Like Suicide Squad, well, man, that movie B- sucked. BV- BVS gets a one and a half. Mm. Uh, Suicide Squad gets a four because they have a lot of pretty decent actors in it and they're allowed yeah. to make jokes sometimes. Um, but yeah, that's, that's as good as it gets. Yeah. Um, Man of Steel sits at solidly two and a half, I think. Mm-hmm. And then one and a half for BVS. Man of Steel holds the absolute undisputed record for biggest gap between quality of trailer and quality of movie. Because I think that is one of the best movie trailers that has Dude, ever been made. It's so sick. It's fucking epic in every single way, and the movie is a complete dog turd. Fuck. Anyways, yeah, we were talking about video games. Yeah, <laughs> Gotham Knights. I, I How about fucking that? Fucking railroaded. Gotham Knights. Looks Knights? good. Yeah. It's yeah, cool. it looks all right. They, they killed the bat. That's cool. And I mean, who hasn't no wanted to dead. play? Fair, yeah, fair. Just like the Joker, right? It's the same. Nobody, name. yeah, nobody dies. You exactly. Me, fuck off. <laughs> um, so yeah, who hasn't wanted to play these Arkham games with a buddy though, or with three friends? Um, I think that it looks pretty cool, and, and the combat, you know, it's got that solid, hard hitting Arkham style that uh, it looks more refined than ever in this one. So yeah, this looks all right. What threw yeah. me off a little bit though is the. I mean, some of the things they said in the gameplay video about 
being able to approach it in any order and you know mm. there's health bars above all the guys and there's damage numbers and things that makes me a little worried that this is too far in the games as a service direction oh yeah but no this is it looks this fun is, this is the this is the ubisoft crunch wrap model yeah it might be you know where it's just like a little bit of cry a little bit of creed a little bit of dogs you know just like throw sprinkle it all in together in some combination put give everybody batman outfits you know i mean their fists yeah. more or less spongy depending upon what they're fighting it's it's fine I was pretty on board when Batgirl launches a dude into the air and Robin combos him down to the ground. Like, yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. That's pretty I'm, dope. I'm feeling you. Totally. But, like, having the Court of the Owls in the trailer, there's no way oh. Batman's dead. Mm, yeah. Right? All right, well... He's well, got to come I back. Mean, yeah, but he won't be playable, and that's... Do you think... I, I, I'm feeling I'm like sure, this is but... the end game power drop is is Batman post owls. He'll be he'll just wrecking fools. He'll be playable in the nearly infinite number of fucking challenge rooms that they make you go through to get your gold medals. It's impossible to get a game together because everybody is picking Batman. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's not he's not gonna be in the game. Not playable. And I mean maybe. Two Batman games, no playable Batman. Oh, fuck. Uh, I'm I'm calling it now. You will play as Batman in Gotham Knights. Oh, I hope I, I hope man, you're I... wrong. Just for the like shrieking tidal wave of rage that will crest <laughs> over the horizon. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree. Though so good. It's, it's hard to imagine that he won't be there in some capacity. I mean. Here's the deal. Some of my favorite DC content that I've seen in the last couple of years has had no Batman in it. Uh, the Harley Quinn animated show, Doom Patrol. Th- these are this is amazing shit that is fully divorced from Batman in every in every way, and I love all of it. <laughs> yeah, man. Speaking of no um, Batman, I'm real I'm, quick. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. Well, well, I was just going to say, I discovered actually just yesterday the like Flash alternate timeline arcs in Batman. And I was looking through the one where uh, Bruce is the is the one that actually gets shot in the alleyway and Bruce dies. And then his dad takes up the mantle of Batman and his mom becomes the Joker. Have you guys ever seen this? I've, I've heard of this. Yeah. I haven't really, seen it, no. really interesting. Yeah. So just just James mentioning that his the stuff that he's seen from Batman in the past little bit, there's been no Batman. Got me thinking about that. I would love to see something like that. You know, it's it's out there, but I would love to see something like that. Yeah, I was just gonna say that I'm I'm stoked to see some of these other Batman adjacent characters get some some real screen time. Yeah, get some shine. I, I you think know? you know, uh Robin especially is an incredibly underrated character who just doesn't get that much screen time because he's always in the shadow of Batman. For sure. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it's tough to it's tough to get behind the guy that's in the little green booty shorts. You know what I mean? But no, I'm totally with you. Badass well, I'm all character. All about them shorts, man. <laughs> Badass character, <laughs> and I'm sure he's gonna be kicking ass in this game. Now, uh, I... Nightwing as well, though. Uh, sorry, go on, James. I was going to say, I feel like Robin only wears the booty shorts in the bedroom <laughs> shortly before Hey-o. whatever yeah. goes down. I don't know if he's like a top or a bottom or like what his deal is, but I, <laughs> I you know, maybe the shorts stay on. I don't know. I, I don't know how he gets down. It's not really my business. I'm a little curious, but you know, that's, that's for him. I realized Robin was so well versed in wanging and banging. I mean, he's like the quintessential rebellious teenager. That's what we call a callback, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fucking. Um. Bring it back. Yeah, but let's be real, man. Robin isn't doing any wanging and banging. He's the one sitting in the corner watching, crying. Red Hood, total wanger, <laughs> total banger. <laughs> yep. Yep. Nightwing. He gets in there every now and then. I will say that though the the quality of the like graphical presentation, not that this is representative of the final game at all, 
looks way better in Suicide Squad than it does in Gotham Knights. Holy oh. shit. Yeah. It's yeah, fucking it was, unreal. It's like the same thing that uh, Gotham Knights looked off, right? Especially compared to like Arkham Knight, man. Arkham Knight is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And, it looks uh, okay. Yeah. It, it looks fine. It just Suicide Squad is is all like next gen hardware. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's running just butter smooth and just like like I was like writing an article about it, I think, and I was I had a still frame of it in front of me and I was just like, You you could show me that and be like, That's a photograph. I'd believe you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like that's 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 a that's a Harley Quinn cosplayer in, in the <laughs> middle of a Doing a little scene for the camera, but like, yeah, sure, I I, I buy that. Yeah. Uh, the thing I like about the Suicide Squad, uh, dealio is they have, unlike Marvel's Avengers, they have strayed just far enough away from the movie character designs to make it look oh, yeah. unique. You know, there's there's Cat- so many things going on in the comic books. Like, use use Cat- some of this Boomerang looks so cool. Yes. <laughs> totally. Fucking and Deadshot with his like it's that sweet helmet and uh, all his gear. Uh, Quinn, I'm like, d- d- I'm, I'm I'm withholding judgment until I see her in action a little more. It, Quinn's all about like the lines that she delivers anyway. She's basically this universe is Deadpool, so like, right, yeah, but without powers, which also somehow makes her more interesting. Anyways, yeah, she <laughs> does look a lot like Margot Robbie, mm. for sure. But that that's I... kind of. A harder oh. one to distinguish because Quinn is based kind of on her like body type and makeup. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's it's harder to like carve out that space because like in the initial character design is so uh, specific. Yeah, that's true. Um, like, yeah, she looks more. Um, she looks more like uh, battle hardened. More like um, more like somebody who actually is like athletic and beats the shit out of people for fun. Whereas like Margot Robbie seems like not that like very, very wiry, very, very wiry. Yeah. 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 But uh, by the time the suicide squad game comes out, it'll be pretty much eight years since Rocksteady had a game. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yep. Arkham Knight was 2014. Holy fuck. So My mind is blown. Yeah, and Gotham shit. Knights is being done by WB Montreal, so you can't even, you know, it's like a totally different development studio. Yeah. WB, they they did uh, Arkham Origins, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. So they're competent. They can do it. They're, they're competent, but I think that everybody would agree that, well, not everybody. I have seen the, the stragglers that consider Origins the best, but I think most people agree Origins was the worst out of those four games. Yeah. Not to say that that is indicative in any way of the quality of, of Gotham Knights. I think Gotham Knights will be fun, but just putting that out there. Like, in a vacuum, if you played Arkham Origins, you would play it and think it was sure, an sure. outstanding game. Yeah, yeah. But in the context of Asylum and City and Night, Origins is, you know, it's a hanger-on. It's a, it's a B project, which is fine. Yeah. What's not fine is... Uh, What's going on between Epic Games and Apple? <laughs> Fucking Fortnite, man. Yeah. <clears throat> like, the whole thing is kind of weird. The The part of the story I've seen in the most detail is that Epic wants the ability to bypass the iOS app store. And it's all like, no, we want to be able to put our own fucking storefront with our own like uh caught co- like our own like cost breakdown and shit like that like they want to be able to like take a bigger cut from like the 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 pro the sales or whatever and they want to be able to like bypass all of apple software and just use their own shit yeah and apple is... that's never gonna fly no <laughs> and the, it, it, heads up google has also been like no get the fuck off our app store we no get out of here yeah you're trying to like bring your own game in town these are our phones you fucko <laughs> like i i understand the concept of the the lawsuit in in you know in generality it 
it makes sense to have multiple options for where you get your stuff, yada, yada, yada. But the, the counterpoint that was made by Apple is that the 30% cut is very standard across the board. It's the same on Google. It's the same on Xbox. It's the same on the Nintendo eShop. It's the same on PSN. It's 30%. So you're you're trying to get around this thing, uh, which is there to protect the person who's downloading things. You could just download an iPhone thing from anywhere. You'd be infected with a virus in twelve point three seconds, and uh, you know the cops would be bashing down your door in in thirty five seconds. I th- I think the mm. thing that Epic is kind of riding high on is the fact that they circumvented this shit on pc because they created their own storefront and where like steam takes 30 percent, epic takes 15 and they they're, they're trying to take that momentum and run with it to other platforms but other platforms are uh gatekeepered a bit more actively <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. like pc is a lawless fucking wasteland compared to consoles yeah yeah it's a jungle yeah you know, I think it'll be a long and drawn out legal battle. But you know, Apple they just crossed 2 trillion dollars in worth. You're not going to wow. beat them legally. No. It's just not going to work unless the government legislates it, and I don't see that happening. They probably I've... have a couple law firms, like full law firms that just like just do nothing but Apple Apple suits. Oh yeah. You know? Apple law. Yeah. It's got to be a thing, yeah. right? Um, I fucking love the statements that Epic and Apple have been putting out like to one up each other. I feel like they've been having like a passive aggressive Facebook conversation. You know, it's like <laughs> Epic will, will put out their statement saying, oh, yeah, well, no, uh, uh, Apple said we could do this and this. But then Apple will come out saying, oh, no, 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 no. We showed you this and this and you didn't follow that. And yeah, I've been enjoying reading these statements that have been going back and forth. It was it was really funny because like, um. Apple revealed that like uh, Epic was looking for a, a special deal, and then like Epic shot back like, "No, no, we didn't do that. We just wanted the ability to open up a store within their store and bypass their security." I'm like, "That's not better. <laughs> yeah, the right, fuck like, is what? wrong with you?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're just like showing their whole ass. Like, <laughs> we can all see, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there's a way more tactful way to go about this. Um, if if this if this is their epic's end goal, which you know, hey, I'm all for challenging the the uh, you know the the ruling class, but there's a way to go about that. And trying to get into court with a company with literally unlimited resources is just not going to work. Yeah, they're going to lose this one and it's going to reveal to them the limits of their scope in certain fields and they'll take this lesson and fully ignore it for their next crazy venture. (laughs) Um, I mean, speaking of crazy ventures, they did give away Total War Troy on Epic Game Store for a while and uh, they gave away 7 million units of this fucking thing. Sorry, James, did you say 24 hours it was only available? Yeah, for one day. God for the first day, damn. For the first day it was on sale at the Epic Game Store. It was free. And um, I think like 7.5 million units they moved. The devs were psyched. They I were bet. so fucking <laughs> jazzed. They're like, holy <laughs> shit, look at our new install base. This is amazing. <laughs> Publisher? Oh, and uh, Epic covered the cost of the game's development. So, okay. It's okay. gravy. Whatever happens from here on in, they're fine. <laughs> but Total War is a great series. Mm-hmm. I'm. They've been doing. Epic's been doing a really great job with giving away good games. You know, they gave away yeah. GTA Five and they gave away Civ Six. Now they're giving away Total War. You know, it's drawing people into the platform, even if they have qualms about the ownership of the company and who's getting the data and things like that. People are like, "Well, I could get Total War for free." Just I think let maybe Tencent I'm gonna go take to over the world already. Sorry, yeah, what? It, I was just going to say, just let Tencent take over the world. It's fine. Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you're a developer or, or like a company with a platform and you are not looking at what 
PlayStation does with their plus deals every month or Xbox Live gives you with their games with gold every month. Uh, if you don't have something like that going, then you're far, far behind the competition. And Epic, like you said, Paul, they've been releasing some really nice stuff for free. Um, yeah, it, the Epic Game Store is cool. Like as long as they're not trying to fight Apple, you know, it seems like Epic is is making a lot of smart moves in that regard. I don't know if we covered this on a podcast, but apparently, uh, Sony put a a little investment into Epic as well, which is huh. is very interesting. I I did not know that. Yeah, it was two or three percent. But it was oh, okay. several hundred million dollars at this point. Yeah, that's got to translate to something coming to the to the PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, I guess right. they got to try to get a bit of the pie since Tencent owns like forty percent to that company. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's like you know maybe access to delivery mechanisms or servers or things to speed up PSN. Could be something like that. I think it's just like. Something rich people just do to like diversify their portfolios. They they want they want to make sure that their fucking assets aren't liquid, so they can, you know, vastly increase their wealth while like skirting tax laws and stuff like that. Yeah, 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 it's a whole thing. So somebody just added this to the doc. I don't know who did it, but uh, I'm gonna skip the other things to talk about it because I'm so excited about it. And that is Ghost of Tsushima Legends, the co-op multiplayer thing that's just free and coming out this fall so fucking excited oh my god it looks so good man i love how they're like diving into more of the lore one of my favorite parts of tsushima was the um the like side tales where you would actually get like a story you know yeah somebody would tell you this like ancient story and then you'd go off and you'd go and you'd earn a, a new skill or a new piece of cosmetic gear whatever i love Mm -hmm. that shit and and the legends looks like it's going to dive into more of that it's more of like the fantastical uh you know uh otherworldly kind of lore um and yeah man it's just it looks so good it's exactly what we would have wanted out of tsushima multiplayer right you pick your guy you got ronin sniper samurai uh what is it ninja as well or something um and yeah (laughs) so it just looks badass so I haven't really looked at this because I don't like playing games with other human beings generally. Mm, fair. But I kind of feel like the combat in Tsushima is like very specifically keyed to like one man versus an army. And like four men versus an army feels like logistically or mechanically is going to be kind of complicated to make. So like, you know, like it feels good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's what makes me interested in this side of things because I'm, I'm with you James I typically don't want to play multiplayer but the fact that this is a thing that clearly they've been working on and it's not just spun up in the last month and a half and the, based on the quality of the combat generally in Ghost of Tsushima it makes me feel like there's got to be something here like they they are putting this thing out for a reason because they believe it to be of high enough quality and uh, different enough from the root game to be worthwhile. The... Yeah, I'm gonna play it. I'm not. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's gonna happen. You know, I th- I I think that the best missions in the single player are the ones that are like the siege style mm-hmm. missions, or like you know, defend a camp or whatever, where you've got a bunch of Mongols storming a gate, and it's you and a few of your guys holding the fort down or you know r- roles are reversed you and your your army are, are storming a, a, a castle or, or uh, wherever it seems like legends is going to be like ba- I, I don't know if it'll entirely be missions like that but it seems like that's what it's going to be based around is those big epic uh like sprawling missions where there's going to be enemies everywhere and it, it just didn't seem like it was going to be an issue for all four players to have enough to do you know, it seemed like everybody's going to be busy. Everybody's going to have a role to play. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be smart in that way. You know, it'll be, man, it'll be engaging like that. And I hope yeah. that they, I, I hope that they add some sort of, you know, I don't know if a loot system is what we necessarily need, but nah, we need, the combat we... doesn't really favor it. Like you're, right? you're, you're, it's more about like your ability to like 
pull shit off and like do sweet yeah. moves. Like you could have you could have like one of your team like distracting people with like noisemakers and like uh fires and wasps and shit. You can have like yep. one person like sneaking up and taking out like guard towers. You can have somebody, you know, fucking busting the door down and yeah. screaming at people for battle, be like Fight me, you cowards! <laughs> yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Send your best uh, warrior. Yeah, uh, uh, but they were even going so far as to talk about raid-style missions for this mode. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So, uh, I mean, they must have some kind of incentive, whether that's cosmetic or, you know, even if it's uh, uh, charm-based or something like that. I'm really interested to see where they go with this thing. Super, super excited. I just actually got the Platinum in Ghost of Tsushima a few days ago. Oh, man. I don't do that too often with games, but man, I just love this one so much, and I did everything in it. So now, I really need more to do. Yeah, <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Coming soon. Uh, a couple more things on the list here. Uh, one is that apparently there was a tweet from someone high up in PlayStation. I could not find the tweet, so I can't remember his name. Anyways... He said it was the PS5, like they always say, was going to be the best lineup in PlayStation history. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, uh, apparently Demon's Souls got a front-of-the-box rating in South Korea. Oh. Yeah. So the rumor is that Demon's Souls is, uh, one, not far away, and two, maybe a launch game. Probably. Which would if there be was... absolutely massive, considering yeah. that Xbox uh, has recently gone down from one to zero exclusive launch games. Oh, Jesus Christ. Of note. It, of note. Yeah, while Demon Souls looks very cool, it doesn't look revolutionary by any means. It doesn't look like it's going to be changing the genre uh, in a major way. So if no. there was one of the games that I would bet on being ready for launch, it would be Demon's Souls. You know, you got to figure that this type of game they could really bang out, and they've been banging out for the past couple of years. Um, yeah, I that, that's probably a good bet to put your money on this game coming out at launch. Oh, it wasn't a tweet. It was an interview with gamesindustry.biz. That would be why I couldn't find it, because I was searching Twitter. <laughs> well, I searched Twitter, and I found it in less than a minute. <laughs> Google foo, baby! Hwa! <laughs> Way to go, James. Um, yeah, I mean, Bluepoint hasn't put anything out since Shadow of the Colossus, and that was just about two years ago. So it would make yeah. sense that whatever they're working on, and that's Demon Souls, would be ready pretty quick. I was super psyched about Demon Souls until I realized that it was just going to be as hard as Demon Souls is, which is harder than Dark Souls. So I was like, ah, uh, maybe not for James. Do you, do you think these games would be better off if they added some sort of beginner difficulty that everybody could play? Or do you think it's They're not just... really designed with that in mind. Like From oh, okay. Software has a very specific design philosophy like that because back in the like last year when they were having a conversation about difficulty settings and accessibility, I was like, this is great, but you can't really have this conversation about a From Software game because they're crazy people who don't do that. Like, that's just not how they roll. Like, there's yeah. lots of games out there that are doing accessibility and doing it right, and it's amazing, but expecting it from these guys will inevitably disappoint you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Demon's Souls is going to be just like a... a Hell on Earth. Uh, spiky dildo of suffering. That's, uh, <laughs> there we go. Nice. Yeah. Well, no, not nice at all. That's, uh, that's <laughs> the idea. Um, right. It's going to look great, and I'm going to hate it so much. <laughs> yeah, definitely not for me, but um, I think arguably the right game to have alongside something much more approachable like Spider-Man Miles Morales at launch. Yeah. That to, makes sense. To give those hardest of hardcore gamers something to be like, yeah, I'm plunking down the money for this thing. And it's going to be day one because, you know, I saw that giant demon in Demon Souls and I got to see what's happening. Yeah, no, you're right. You're definitely hitting the full spectrum if you're uh, bringing Demon Souls out along with the other launch titles. And uh, speaking of the console wars, what the 
fuck is happening over at Xbox, guys? Well, I mean... Halo's been delayed since the last time we talked. And yep. it sounds like maybe it's not just till 2021. It might be till 2022. Jesus. According to who? Uh, I mean, this is this is all reset era. So take it with a giant, enormous grain of salt or several. Uh, a plate? A plate of salt? Yeah. But, you a know, salt lick? A brick? There's a lot of murmuring that this thing is is not as even as well off as it appeared to be at when they showed it. Then maybe it's a 2022 game. confusing. And people also saying that potentially it is not going to be an Xbox One game at launch. Because that's part of the problem and part of why it looked like... Uh... Garbage? Absolutely. I was talking about this a few shows ago. That yeah. whenever a new system comes out... Games that are released for the new system always fucking lag behind. They always struggle when a previous gen or a current gen version, if you want to call it that, is being developed alongside it. It happens every fucking time. And this is no... There's no difference here with this. Uh, This is no exception. Um, That first trailer, I mean, like how long were we laughing at it for? You know, I'm still laughing was a joke it, it looked like they were showing us footage of the first halo um yeah like it, it's this is one of the easiest things to believe this is one of the biggest no-brainers i think that we all could have seen coming um I, I, like i wouldn't be surprised if the initial date or whatever they said like during the trailer they knew that they weren't going to hit that in the first place but on the flip side of that i also wouldn't be surprised if they did think it was good to go and then they saw the fucking backlash that they got once they showed the game off and they were like okay we better pivot and oh fuck figure, it's actually you know? as bad as 90 percent of the company said before we put out this trailer 100 percent. like do, do you think that's what it is do you think that they showed it off and everybody pretty much or 90 percent of the people hated it and they're like yeah we need to fix this domino's pizza dunked on this game <laughs> what <laughs> yeah they did <laughs> well, what happened they put out a fucking like twitter ad or something with like a pizza <laughs> image and one half was like crazy pixelated and one half was super crisp and they were like don't worry domino's always delivers <laughs> and it's just like oh fuck <laughs> holy shit <laughs> They even hashtagged it. It was like hashtag Halo Infinite as well. Fuck that. Yeah, funny. no, it was real bad. <laughs> it's like Domino's going for the win. They're trying to take the crown away from Wendy's as spiciest, uh, spiciest Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's got to be a good job. Whoever's running those Twitter accounts. Oh fuck. Basically. The Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter account, which is run by this guy named Aaron Weber for a while, yeah, started the trend, and then companies like Wendy's jumped on it soon afterwards, and mm-hmm. soon everybody was trying to uh, recruit a like savvy twenty-something brand manager to like make them seem like human beings and not, you know, <laughs> fucking physical manifestations of the Monopoly Man. <laughs> I like the Monopoly yeah. Man. I mean, well, he did, yeah. Top hat, little car. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about yeah. wanging and banging? Is this the? Is this where you tell us or confess to us that you want to fuck the Monopoly man? Because I didn't say that. I've been expecting it for a while, Rhett. I didn't say that. I just said the Monopoly man does <laughs> fuck. <laughs> just an observation. Okay. <laughs> like. I'm sure he does. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Something about his dick game. Yeah, I don't know. And that'll I'm probably just, do it I'm for this week, the place right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. But, yeah. Send your West okay. right to jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Uh, but, but yeah, Halo, uh, Infinite is fucked. I think ultimately this delay and them maybe having a second thought about what they've done up to this point is, I mean, it's ultimately a good thing for the game, 
but it's absolutely horrible for Xbox as a brand, especially in the short term, because Holy shit. why the fuck would you buy an Xbox Series X this fall? Their launch is going to be like, it's it's like a 100 meter dash, but the starting gun is aimed at the leg of one of the, <laughs> of the runners. <laughs> at the last second, they're just like, oh, and then and then that guy, Xbox, is like limping and bleeding up the fucking track. God, I, they're the, oh, they're, they're so the fucking Jamaican bobsled team of the console race, man. They're fucking walking, uh, walking. Cool their... runnings, baby. <laughs> they need their John Candy though. Somebody's gotta, oh, ooh, somebody's God, gotta please. bring the team home. Mm-hmm. Please, please. Somebody's gotta believe in them, but nobody else will. Jesus, truly. Anyways, any who's. Uh, Nintendo has nothing in their release forecast except for Pikmin 3 for the rest of 2020 and that's weird, isn't it? Really? Anyways, that's all for today. Yes, nothing. Literally nothing but Pikmin 3. Good God. Look it up on Metacritic. It's a wasteland. It's the desert of the real. They're... What are they doing? (laughs) But they do have another three to four hundred dollar ninety nine anime games filled with scantily clad women down the pipeline. So if you're looking for any of those yeah like vroom in the night sky Mm -hmm. check out a video of that one if you ever want to feel really sad about the world and what it's come to (laughs) that's that's exactly what i need right now do you think that maybe that wasteland does lend a little bit of credence to this new switch report Mm. you know i'm gonna say no because i don't want to be wrong but (laughs) maybe i don't know yeah but it's like Crisis Remastered, okay? The Crisis 4K is coming pretty soon. If there was a Switch 4K coming, then wouldn't Crisis Remastered? Yeah, then it could run like shit in an even higher definition. <laughs> Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we all want? That's, right? that's what we expect. I want 4K, yeah. but like 12 frames per second. Mm, yeah. Mm. I want to be able to count them go by. Mm, th- mm. That's smooth. It's yeah. going to be nice. It's going to be so nice. Oh. Smooth like January molasses coming right out of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been Press X the Podcast. It's the show from your friends at Cog Connected with myself, Paul, and Rhett, and James. We've been on this journey for the last 91 minutes, friends. How do you feel? So fucking good. So ready for the next thing, whatever it is, to happen. Hopefully it's good. Please let it be good. I, I'm personally really hopeful that in two weeks' time when we talk again, we will be able to discuss pricing and release dates oh. for next-gen consoles, which presumably are coming fucking... out in November. And that's Any time yeah, now, guys. That's like two week, two months away. It, it, the the next two weeks are you just hoping we get that information or is there anything that leads you to believe we may hear something well theoretically the online gamescom is at the end of this month uh that seems like a pretty okay time to announce such things i mean be- at this point better time than any uh, right like what really it could just yeah. be a twitter post the, on a wednesday i don't give a fuck just tell me how much yeah, i yeah. need to the, yeah, spend on the these best things. time was two months ago that, yeah the second best time is now 100 percent right about that 100 <laughs> percent. every other time but right now is now lower in the stack of best times i'm just so. like how many families are waiting on this in the middle of this fucking covid crisis how many families are waiting on this, waiting on the on, on the pricing so they can figure out how much they need to start saving so they can give their kids the Christmas they want this year, whatever. How many families are going to be fucking, you know, uh, late to the party or, or maybe not even get a system at all at launch um, because of this, this fucking pricing delay? Like At least 12. Or at least 12. Maybe 13. 100%. 13 families. <laughs> uh, Red, do you have any other closing remarks? To leave with our listeners? Uh, yeah. <sighs> PGA Tour 2K21. Um, I have gotten word that there may actually be an update coming to fix this bug that I've been talking about. So, I don't know. Maybe you want to go back and play that game now more so than uh, you would have if you listened to me at the start of this show. 
Um, other than that, fuck. Fuck me. Okay, yeah. Paul, any closing remarks? <laughs> I think I'm just going to let Rhett's words ring across okay. the, the lands of All the right. internet. I'm just, okay. fuck what about me. As, as, as for old James, just remember, kids, too many waifu will ruin your life Oh. <laughs> think we got a podcast title, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. If you've, I don't know, if you've heard the last few minutes here, uh, thank you for sticking around. I know, I know it's tough sometimes, but you know, we do we, we do what we can, and uh, we will see you back here in a couple of weeks' time for episode three nineteen of Press X Podcast. In the meantime, you can check out CogConnected.com. That's where you can get all your news, reviews, previews, features cosplay, videos, video game and nerd related stuff all the time. And if you wouldn't mind, please, please, please like, subscribe, give a review to this podcast so that we can grow and get better. And I don't know, maybe one day we'll have a sponsor, guys. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Blue Chew. Blue Chew. I can't oh, wait. On. Manscaped. I can't wait Manscaped. to cut that uh, to cut that ad with you guys. Oh, fuck yes. That'd be fucking dope. I've always wanted to cut a manscape yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey -o. All right. See you later, everybody. We will catch you again sometime. See you later. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>